You know, um, I'm a very chilled, laid back kind of guy, to be honest with you. I can be an extrovert when I need to be. I'm an introvert when I need to be as well. You know, so um, um, I'm just a chill kind of guy, laid back, happy go lucky, always fun, down for whatever. That's actually my wow, motto, because yeah. that's the name of my label. Yeah, down so whatever. down for whatever. Yeah. Well, how come it changed to Baba Kubo now? How could you not use down for whatever anymore? So down for whatever is actually my label. And I still use that. Down for Even Tem is my label. And, uh, and that's my motto I use. I go by my name, Baba. So my full name is Baba Tumi Da. Yeah. Which means my dad is saying that I'm a better version of him. Or God has made a better version of me. Yeah. You know, with Yoruba um, names, most African yeah, names, yeah, there are yeah, sentences yeah. that are aspirations by our parents. Yeah. So by shortening that to Baba, to make it easier for anyone to find me, call me without feeling awkward for those who are non-Yoruba, non-Nigerian. That's why. Wow. So how old were you when you first started doing music? How old were you? That's a good question. Um, I honestly say I was born into music. Yeah. Um, my parents were Afro jazz musicians. My mom was a singer slash dentist. My dad was a guitar player, bass player. And he also did like, um, you know, some work on the side. He had some businesses on the side. But I was born into music. They had started their own spot called Jazz 38. Wow which is very historic in Nigeria's history when it comes to live music. It was one of those places where, you know, the professionals or the people that you and I knew growing up would play there. But over the weekends or in the evenings, they would have community workshops to help kids, you know, who are aspiring to be theater or artistic yeah. to help them hone their craft. So I grew up in it. As I was born, they were singing and playing in my house. They'll be performing or they'll be rehearsing. And sometimes I get to go along with them. So I've always been into music. It's always been part of my life, you know, for lack of a better word. Wow. So what kind of genre would you call your music? What kind of genre is it? I would say it's Afrobeat or Afrobeats with an S. You know, um, there's a difference between the two. Well, you do UK drill, so is it all just combined together? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yes, the UK drill. So um, I would like to say it's eclectic. R rather than say what my genre is, so I have to be put into world music. Yes. So I'm a world music artist, you know, Afrobeat, Afropop. Um, some people say that, you know, um, you know, um, it's global, but I like to experiment with what I know. I grew up listening to rap. Tupac is one of my favorite rappers of oh, all yes, time. Yes. Eminem, Lil Wayne, you know, you can list Kendrick, the list goes on, Drake. But, uh, and then I grew up, my parents were playing jazz, but I'll come and play as well, you know. So, you know, and a lot of the musicians, a lot of the musicians who no one knows who come and play were just also very high life, very jazz oriented. So I decided to do the same thing as well. So that was me. So jazz. Wow. So you, and Afro -jazz. you said that. And Afro -jazz. So you said that your parents also did music as well. So I'm guessing that they also supportive of you creating music as well. Yes, they were. You know, they were very supportive. They would actually invite me to come out on stage and perform with them. Yeah. They would help me get the instruments I need to perform or play. Um, but they, they did highly encourage or suggest that I get a degree or two. Don't follow, don't just do music, have something else to give you options. Options are good in any situation in life. So they were very supportive as much as they could. They definitely wanted me to do music and even join them sometimes. But I need to be in bed early, go to school, get a degree or two. They were like, I'm sure you know the thing. I'm sure your dad yeah. and mama like that. Of course, of course. What do you have a degree in? So I have two degrees. My first degree is in electrical and electronics engineering. That's my bachelor's degree. Yeah. Similar to my dad, I did electrical engineering. My master's is in mobile communication systems, yeah. which is really more like radio frequencies. Physics is very specific, very unique, very niche, but uh, it's more physics. So that was both of my degrees in that engineering path, like my dad was in. Wow. So what was your favorite song that you've ever created? Wow. I only if I have a favorite song I ever created because every song hits the same every time. And I say that because when I record or write music, before I release it, I'll listen to it on my phone. I'll go into my car, listen to it there. I'm also listening to it, you know, um, in a club because I want to make sure that it's intentional. It hits the same every way. So every song tells a story. It's part of my fabric of life. It's part of the threads that make up Baba Kuboye. And my music is very intentional. You know, I'm not, um, I don't follow music for the but, trends like my parents did. About, sorry to interrupt. You said something about what makes Baba Kuboye. What makes your, what makes Baba Kuboye? Because you said something that makes you, what makes you? 
what makes me i think my experiences in life yeah. make me my um my purpose in life helps makes me as well um my, my passion for my music for what i do makes me as well you know so so those are things that make me but whatever i want to put out if it's um talking about mental health like songs like cool it down or celebrating women like songs like uh kalakuta girl or being grateful for life like songs with the koi boy or talking about you know one world like uh aye which is uh, the last single i put out or oh, the drill song i put out which i'm very proud of where i'm from in nigeria forget what you heard it's dirty december are you going to lagos <laughs> no nah, no what's dirty december i don't get that dirty december I mean, I was joking, but Dirty December is, you know, it's, 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 it's something that happens in Lagos every year. But um, I said that to say, I have a song called Wazobia, which is where I was trying out some drill. And I said, you know what, let's try and do something where, let me, you know, usually rappers are like, or people who are artists are like, don't go to my hometown, don't go to my hood because it's a rough place. I'm very proud of where I'm from. That's why I'm flossing the green, white, green today or anytime I have. So I did a song called Wazobia, which is like, come it means come in three different languages so i'm telling everyone if you can go home go to nigeria christmas is when people go back for dirty december they call it dirty because there's just partying it's dirty i don't know how dirty it's gonna get but you know but um it's a, it's a vibe back home in lagos so any time of the year go back to nigeria it doesn't have to be lagos you know that's where i live but uh but yeah home is home wow so where do you have where's your audience but do you, is it nigeria is it or are you worldwide do you only cut yourself as okay i'm only nigerian or are you worldwide well i'm nigerian i used to live in england so i'm british as well i live in america now so i'm american as well but thankfully music travels across all boundaries good music or good sound travels you know you don't have to be a physician like me to even know that or a physicist rather but you know so um i'm all over the world i'm thankful that i have fans or audiences uh, based on spotify and apple music in nigeria you know in kenya and south africa a lot of the central and southern parts of africa i have in europe and you know thankfully i have some in the latin american countries as well as well as the u.s so it's all over it's wherever you know people who who are moved by the music to listen to it or are exposed to it listen and that's how i get my audience wow so you said something about that like, you do genre that you're based on afro but would you ever do um oh, what's the other genre called again the um the jamaican the caribbean genre i forgot what it's called again but, now would you ever do which that? one reggae dance hall or yeah reggae know. and dance hall because actually I have a, that came to another question of mine as well that you know fella kuti and you you do similar music to him is it would you call that the reggae of africa or what would you call his type of music what that's a good that? question yes um so afro beat and afro beats with an s when I try to describe it to people, I use reggae and dancehall as an example. Quintessential Afrobeat is quintessential reggae, but Mali is the Afrobeat equivalent in reggae. Yeah. You know, um, Pela, but in other words, started the genre Afrobeat in a sense. So he's the father of it. And he has more quintessential style of doing his music. Big band, horns, intentional about the music, always a message. You know, always a message of community service in a way. <clears throat> you know, and so was Bob Marley. But new school, what you and I listen to today is a version of that. It's not exactly the same, but it's what has it's the modernized version. So I'll say dancehall or Afro beats, Afro pop. Some people say Afro pop. And it's got many, many layers to it. There's Afro jazz, there's Afro fusion, there's Afro house. There are many side stems coming out of original Afro beats. So very difficult to put in a box because there's so many genres. But, you know, it's all still Afro beat, which is, you know, just, you know, African music from West Africa. So that's that's how I'll explain it. Wow. So if you have the opportunity to collab with anyone who would it be Ooh. why Ooh. so my mother is late, late and she passed away before i could actually go into music full-time she passed away when i was a teenager about 15 or 16 and i said if there was any one person i'd like to collaborate with is my parents because they gave me the inspiration to do music and so what i did was i sampled a version of her vocals from back in the day when she was still alive i got my cousin femi kuti to jump on a track with me so i featured her you know, and um, I have this thing of featuring people who I know inspire me. So my mom and my dad inspire me. I got them to feature me on my music. Yeah. Fela Kuti is obviously an inspiration. Would love to collaborate with him soon. 
you know, um, my great great grandfather, um, um, JJ Ransom Kuti. I actually featured him on a song called Igbala on my last album, Cultural Canvas, released um, September 2023 last year. So, but those are people in family. I know your question might be, who is not, who is alive and not blood that I like to. Um, um collaborate with and honestly i'm a greedy guy i can't have one i'll probably have like 10. you know should i start naming them for you it's a good ambition, a good ambition to have yeah. <laughs> you can name them. i mean <laughs> i mean so oof so on the on the rapper hip-hop side obviously kendrick drake you know eminem little wayne i'll love to collaborate with them if they're up for it because it's now fusing 50 cent because it's fusing afrobeat and they've actually had some songs with elements of afrobeat in their music you know um who else i like to uh feature or uh, collaborate with you know there's some jazz legends that i would love to collaborate with their son John Baptiste is someone I'd love to collaborate with if he was available. I mean, I'm making some new friends at the Academy. Beyond Till be someone I'd love to collaborate with well, if she's available. Yeah, legend. Yeah, you know, that would be, be crazy. You know, there are lots of people who, you know, even the Taylor Swift, Bruno Mars, are you kidding me? Lady Gaga. You know, these are people that, you know, they, they are established, but Bruno Mars is someone that he's also a musician as well. So I think putting out an Afrobeat would be crazy. But like you say, or like I told you, as I said, I'm greedy, so I've mentioned more than 10 right now, but I would love to collaborate. But for me, I collaborate with anyone who there's alignment. And let me not forget our Nigerian, you know, uh, people who are doing well in Afrobeat right now. Wizkid, David Doe, uh, Burner Boy, Thames. You know, Yemi Alade, she's up for a Grammy as well. You know, shout out to the ladies doing well. Tyler, who won the first Grammy. You know, so I would love to collaborate with. It's alignment. That's what I was going to with that alignment where, you know, we can gel on the sound and on the sonic. So I'm not picky. I'm not bougie. If there's alignment, we can work something out. So. Wow. So how many songs have you released so far? A lot. And, and, the, song, and the amount of songs that you've released. What do you, in your songs, do you, like, do you have any moral message that you're going to, that you would leave in your songs, that you leave in them songs that you've made? Sure. Yeah, so I have about three albums out now. I'll go chronologically backwards. So I released a single, Aye, about a few months ago. That was on the ballot for a Grammy. That was last, this year. Last year, I released a 10-track album called Cultural Canvas. Um, before that, I released um, From Ikoi with Horns in 2022. Um, that was about seven tracks. Before that, I released um, um, One Day in, 2020, in 2018. And that was... Um, I think seven or eight songs on that. And then before that, I released an album, 2005, 2006, called Down For Whatever, un under the name Baba. So I have albums and music out, but um, there was a time I took a break in between. But my goal now is to be more consistent with the music, release as often or more times as possible. Wow. So where do you see yourself 10 years from now? That's a good question. And I didn't answer your second question of the last time when you said moral direction. I have a lot of moral directions, honestly. Um, Soft Life is a single of my album, Cultural Canvas, last year. I was talking more there about, um, you know, everything is not money. It's about inner peace, you know, um, about, you know, um, having good ethics, good moral scruples. Don't be judgmental. Don't be jealous of anyone, but focus on your grind. You know, songs like Cool It Down, like I say, they talk about mental health. You know, from Ikoi, Ikoi Boy talks about gratitude. You know, um, so in my music, I try and be intentional. And I don't do music for trends, which is why, you know, I, I talk about anything that I feel is related to me, including Nigeria, where I'm from, or where I am. Yawa talked about racism after George Floyd. You know, so I'm not scared to speak about on issues that I think are uh, resonating within me and with people in general. Where do I see myself in 10 years? That's a great question. Um, I'm on a journey where I'm exploring and I'm expanding every day in my consciousness, in my expression, in my gifts of music and in life in general. You know, I want to continue down that path in a better position than I was today. You know, so 10 years from now, I already have my own label. I put up my own music. Um, I'm already going on tour. Um, I'm already re releasing music that is, you know, radio friendly and topping charts. Thanks. Shout out to the UK. Conco was actually um, in the top 10 on, I think, BBC or top 30 at one point. So, um, so shout out to that. I want to continue doing more of that, but I also want to give back. You know, um, I grew up listening to my parents and seeing how they gave back with community service, with their gift. I give back with my, with my, with my music 
always trying to have you know a purpose and i also want to be able to give back to people who are either musically inclined or not musically inclined outside music so you know that's the goal to be able to just give back to the world because it's a beautiful life we all share and as i've received i should give and that's what i hear the song i just released is about so that's about that. i agree so what's one thing that you would say to your old self as your current as in your current self now what's one thing you would say to your old self that you wish you would have done better you could have done better. well that's that, that that's a great thing to ask and you're very good with the questions by the way um so i always tell myself this my future self is relying on my present self to keep the promises i kept i made to my past self so i would tell my what i'll tell myself now is baba well done you've done very well you've come this far i'm on the ballot for nominated for being part of a project in the grammy that's not that was something i wanted to do and i'm doing now yeah you know um, um, I'm, I'm touring with my music. I'm putting out the music that I think is important to me. Well done for doing that. Um, um, the sky is still your limit as it is. You've broken a lot of um, expectations, including yours. It's an exciting world we live in. Yeah. Do not sleep on your dreams and your inner voice and your aspirations because look at what has come of you so far. Wow. So talking about the Grammy, so you got a Grammy for your um, song called Aya. So can you please elaborate to me how you got the Grammy, how you got nominated for the Grammy Awards? Because that's why, well, that's, well, that's, that's the biggest music awards ever, or even... Like, it's, it's big, and so I'll need to clarify a few things. So uh, I did have a song called Aye that was on the ballot. Okay. It didn't get nominated. Okay. What got nominated is a fellow musician's work, which I was part of. He's in the blues, contemporary blues category. His album, acclaimed album, is called The Fury. His name is Antonio Vergara. I had vocals and sax participation on that album. And that's this album of body of work that has been nominated for the Grammys that's coming up in February next year. Um, I don't do music for awards. It feels great to be nominated or to be part of a, a, a body of work that has been nominated. It's an amazing feeling to be able to be recognized, especially by a community. Any artist would tell you we don't do music for the awards. You know, um, I won an award by the Hollywood Independent Music Awards for my song, The Koi Boy, about two years ago. You know, I get awards and I'm thankful for the acknowledgement. And uh, it also helps reaffirm. Actually, it also helps some people take you more seriously, to be honest with you. I mean, right now, people will be like, okay, this guy's uh, got a Grammy under his name. I didn't know about it before. I'll give him a listen. You know, those are the kind of things it does for you. But I don't do music for awards, to be honest with you. But I'm thankful that, you know, I got to rock with Antonio in a genre different from mine. He's in contemporary blues. Okay. I'm thankful that I can show my versatility with my music. Not just, you know, Afrobeat or Afro rap or Afro fusion. I can step outside country folk, you know, be able to play and rock with anybody where it aligns. Yeah. Wow. So, what advice would you give to upcoming rappers who want to be like you or even upcoming musical artists? They might not have to look like, they might not have to be rappers. What, what's one advice you could give to them? So, I started off just as a rapper, to be honest with you. And I found after a while, this is part of my expansion. You know, you asked a, an earlier question, how do you expand? I felt after a while I needed to be able to express myself differently. So I picked up the saxophone, you know, so, and then I learned that. And after a while I thought that, okay, I need to do something different as well. Then I started playing keys, you know, so, and then, but the most important thing is consistency. You gotta be consistent. Well, actually the first thing is belief. You have to believe in yourself that you can do this because trust me, people life will suggest or project that it's not possible you know and in telling my old self when i said well done there's been a lot of you know aspirations and um blockages along the way you have to navigate the field so i would encourage anyone that it's a beautiful world out there where dreams come true prayers are answered manifestations come to pass and you will get done if you're consistent if you are if you come from a good place always and just believe in yourself so that's what i'll tell anyone so keep going you know there's there's enough room for all of us trust me there's no competition in this so uh, people want to hear if you have the gift not everybody has that gift you should try and use it don't uh take your gift for granted
Wow. So I'm going to ask you to do me one favor. Could you freestyle? Since you're a rapper, could you freestyle for us quickly? Um, what I can do is my freestyle game is not what it always used to be. But what I can do is um, there's a drill song. If I can get this out, there's a drill song that I wrote. You know, that's my UK drill song, and um, it's called Wazobia. Okay. You play somewhere there. I don't know if you can play it. Maybe I can play it or something. Can you play? What I can do is rap to it live. And show that you know I can rap, you know, not just um, and I can play it at the same time on the keyboard if I can get this to work. Yeah, I've been here. You know, yeah, without, I started, um, I started this week. I'm gonna post this. Up. I can you, let me let me hear what it sounds like again. Can you play it over there? Uh, I okay. Okay, can I take it off now? I got go to go Yeah, so the colors are green, white, green, the spring, then wigs right like that super eagle. You're about house that evil. You know my time, one nation, one people. Their pride is strong and their pride is alive with lionesses and lions. Most likely the reason everybody says that they are Africa's giants. Kings and queens of the African jungle, not know they ever carry last. Numbers don't lie on the motherland, population size, they're bigger than others. The most popular on the north, south, east, or west. There are two countries in Africa, Nigeria and the rest. Yeah, they got number one, they also got number two, three, and four. So when you pick up the phone to dial, you must call plus two, three, four. The world they chop their Afro beat. The world they chop their jollof fry. Plus, everybody chopping their main rounds, and I don't mean cook and sprite. Their land's evergreen and they have everything. Have you ever seen this? Land of Millennium Cloud. It's mad because the summer is hot all year round. I'm not a liar. If you don't believe me, Wazobia to the land of Wow, 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 Wow. I can go on if you want and play other songs as well, but you know, that's just me, you know, give me a little something for for everyone out there. So yeah. you still there? So what is, what I think I'm gonna lost you. What is Wazobia even mean? It's still buffering on this end, but I got you. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's going off a little bit. So yeah. yeah. Did you hear what I said? No, I didn't hear that. What did you say? Oh, I said what does Wazobia mean? So wa means come in Yoruba. Zo means come in Hausa. Bia means come in Igbo. So what I'm saying is that I'm saying come three times. Come to Nigeria. The song is talking about how beautiful and rich Nigeria is. It's talking about the food we have, how we're the most populous country in Africa. It's a beautiful place for melanin and sun and jollof rice and pretty girls and good looking guys and kings and queens. You know, and then I also talk about history in part two, people that made Nigeria great. You know, people like um, Nandi Azikwe, Obafemi Awulowo, Amadu Bello, the pillars of the founding fathers of Nigeria. So the song means Wazubia, come to Nigeria, you know, so come check it out whenever you can. It's a beautiful country. Wow. So I actually have a last question. When do you plan on touring in Nigeria? That's a good question. Even in your home, you say you're from Ondo State, yeah? Even in Nikale, I tell you, I'm from. You are from Ondo State too, aren't you? Yes, sir. <laughs> Have yeah, you been so there before? We both, both resemble from. But yeah, when do you when do you plan on touring? When do you plan on doing concerts in Lagos and Ondo State as well? That's a great question. You're good with the questions. Um, so I've actually already played in Nigeria before as well. I played a celebration. I played at Shrine a few years ago um you know it was a that was an awesome experience i played that shrine a few times um as and when as and when the opportunity arises i would love to be back home and play you know and perform get my music back to the people there as well and of course i love to go to abelkuta and ondo ibotako where i'm from Akure, which is like you know the the city of ondo state so it just depends on opportunity and alignment if the if the opportunity presents itself i'll go and I've been working towards that opportunity. I performed in Lagos. Would love to do outside Lagos, do more in Africa, not just Nigeria, but charity begins at home. So I love to do Nigeria too. Do you understand the native language, Yoruba, isn't it? Do you understand? No, but well, dear, but I can't speak oh, very well. So yeah. um, <laughs> I can't, uh, one call, can you speak? Yeah, Muli, so dear. 
Uh, me and you both. Uh, so my accent is not the best. I can hear, but I can't speak very well. But I made it a point. Yeah, I was born here, but I can do that. I've never been to Nigeria before, but I can actually do the accent as I speak the language. Yeah, <laughs> you've never been to Nigeria? Never been to Nigeria. No. Yeah, we should change that, bro. So after listening to Wazobi, hopefully you can go to Nigeria too. But luckily for you, and luckily for me, I had parents who, my mom couldn't speak Yoruba, my dad could, and I'll pick up from him and people in the house. But they did a great job with you to make sure you can speak and hear well. Um, that's my goal to do that, you know, to be able to speak and hear well and make sure my kids can speak and hear well too. So I can hear small, I can speak small, but let me not lie to you. Nah, my Yoruba is not the best at all. Baba Kubei, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate the honor. Thank you for coming on my show. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Very much. Thanks for having me. And thanks to everyone in the UK supporting him, supporting me, Afrobeat Music. Stream surprise, stream um, request. And if you want to follow me, babakuboi.com is where you can find me. And that's my name on all social media outlets. Till next time. Thanks for having, having no, me on. I appreciate you. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank TikTok you. as well, Baba Kuboi as well on TikTok. So, yeah. Okay.